Hello everyone, this might be the world's lightest shark bite whoop. If this one isn't, maybe this one is? Now this video isn't necessarily about being so light. Really what I was trying to do was kind of do some testing to see if a shark bite whoop was really a viable product. Was it something that you should build or maybe a company wants to build one? So what we're gonna do in this video is I'll have two flights, one for each. I'm gonna kind of tell you why I still have two and weight isn't everything in this particular case, but we'll go through the components that I chose, maybe some of the um, reasons why I chose them. We'll do the flights and then we'll kind of move on to how you can beat it. Beating it is actually going to be very, very easy because I didn't want to go extremely light because I wanted to maintain some durability. Of course, both cameras stick well outside the canopy, so camera durability it's kind of hard, but thankfully, in all my runs and testing, I only broke one camera. Oh, not bad. So what do they weigh? What's your target? And how easy is it going to be able to beat it? Well, as you can see here, we've got the 802 12,000 KV at about 34 and a half grams. And then the 1102 9,000 KV comes in just a touch over 40 grams. Respectable for a whoop and probably not all that hard to beat. Let's move on to the different parts and some of the reasons why I chose them. We're gonna start off with the frames. Now, I've, I picked the uh, Mobula 7 V3 or the trash can frame. It goes by both names. It depends on where you're looking. I picked that frame because it is the most durable whoop frame that I have experience with. Of course, this is a 75 millimeter format. You're running 40 millimeter props. And as you can see there, even between the two clear ones, there's a fair bit of a weight variance. And then we get to the black one. I only had one black one to weigh uh, and it came out the heaviest. So uh, something to consider is that you might not get one that's 5.33 grams. You might get one that's five and a half grams or you might get one that's 5.64 grams. Of course, there's a host of other frames on the market and you can try them all out and see which way you'd like to go. One thing that I did with the frame to try to reduce the weight, which turns out probably isn't worth it, was I cut out the little supports that are around the pod. Uh, on one whoop, I did it on all four sides, and on the other one, I just did it on two. Um, at 0 0.06 grams <laughs> for those four bits, probably not really worth it. The next primary feature is gonna be our motors, of course. And I decided to go 1102 primarily because I started with 1103s. You might remember if you follow along on the channel, if you're a subscriber, if you're not subscribed, please subscribe. Uh, I was doing the Foxier Digisite with a Whoop, and I had 1103 motors on there. I think they might have been 10,000 kV. So I knew that I could come down in weight by going to 1102. So that's one thing I did. And I put the three on here to sh show you the difference because the uh, Happy Model, the older Happy Model 1102, 9,000 kV, which is what I'm running, came in at 3.04 grams. And you can see with the other two images, we have two of the new Happy Model motors. Again, 1102, 9,000 kV, and we have a slight 0 0.03 variance just from one motor to the next. So another little variable in your weights. On my lower weight, Shark Bite Whoop, uh, we have these two motors. Now these are not the same KV. Unfortunately, going the lower weight, well, we'll get into it. So we've got the Beta FPV 0802, and those are 12,000 kV motors on the left, and they come in at 1.94 grams. And the Happy Model, I think those were 16,000 kV, I can't quite read the image from where I'm sitting now, came in at the same weight. So even if different kV, we have two different manufacturers, this might not hold true across the board though, because you can't even buy those 0802 12,000 KVs. You've got to buy the 0802 SEs. Uh, and that was one of the limiting factors in kind of my exploration of making a shark bite whoop. Of course, with the 1102 motors, we have got to shorten those motor wires to save ourselves a little bit of weight. So we have our right and left comparisons. Uh, not much weight was saved. Of course, some weight was put back by rejoining. Uh, you could, of course, you know, cut the connector off on both the motor side and the board side. I wanted to maintain the connector for that repairability factor. Swapping out motors with the simple connector, that was something I wanted to maintain. Uh, I know that you've got to shorten the motor wires in this case but to maintain the weight, but I did this to explore how much weight can we save. Of course, we have weight that we've added back in with the heat shrink and the solder. So I went ahead and weighed the wires that I pulled off the motors and it comes in at a little over a half a gram for all four motors. So yeah, shortening motor wires is worth it. 
uh, connectors would probably be the next bit. But again, that takes your repairability uh, into a different phase. The next major area we need to look at are the two different cameras that are currently available. We've, we've got the run cam on the left and the Foxier on the right, and you can see those weights. Full half gram difference between those two cameras. I know many people have had difficulties either with focus or the Foxier Digisight cameras running. I have two of them. One of them did die, but quite honestly, I'm not surprised because I have been flying these a lot and I crash all the time inside the house. So I'm a little surprised that the camera lens didn't take any damage. Rather, the camera just stopped powering up. Uh, so that was my damage. Also, I'll show you, I also damaged a uh, MIPI cable. Uh, one of the wires got pinched and that was severed. So if you want the lightest, you obviously want to go with run cam right now. Props are another consideration. We have to look at our props and what they weigh. It's not the end all be all, but it is something that I wanted to look at. And there's very little difference between the Jim Fan Tri and Quad Blade props. For me, I would probably go back to the Quad Blades and I'd give up that little extra weight. Also worth a note, uh, the HQ props on the far left at 0.26 grams and the Newbie Drone Z prop here at 0.28 grams on the right. I was pretty surprised that they came in so close. Uh, unfortunately, I couldn't run the Aziz props with, well, I could run them on my 1102 rig, but they come with one millimeter shafts and my 1102s have 1 1.5 millimeters. So I would have had to drill them all out. Thankfully, I didn't do that because I do find that the Aziz props do break uh, blades fairly regularly. Um, so something to that. Unfortunately, I couldn't try the HQ uh, props on any of my quads because my HQ props have not arrived. From the Moblite 7 review, the HQ props, I just don't have a complete set. They're in a good working order. I got three good props. That's all I got. So I couldn't use those. There, there is a host of other 40 millimeter props. These are the ones I wanted to kind of check. I did not weigh them all up. I'm sure there's information somewhere out there on the internet which has weights of all the little props. And if there isn't, please let me know and I'll ask somebody else to do it. I don't want to do it. Next consideration was my antenna. I wondered how much weight I could save on the antenna. The far right antenna, that was, I don't know where that came from. Probably came from a whoop of some sort, probably a happy model product. I found it to be really poor reception. I don't think that one's cut to the right length, but it is obviously the lowest weight. It doesn't have a little metal shield around it, and it comes in at 0.31. Uh, you can tell the difference on the two on the far left. Those are essentially the same construction. One just has a little bit of a longer wire. The really short one, though, again, I found the reception on the uh, antenna weighing 0.52 grams to be very bad. So that was one I did not use. I did use the one at 0.55 grams. And a little bit of a surprise how much more the 0.94 gram antenna came in at. I really didn't expect it to go up almost a half a gram. Uh, but we have more heat shrink on that one. And the wire or the cable, whatever you want to call it, uh, has that mesh around it. So that when you bend it, it keeps its shape a little bit with that wire mesh. And I think that's where that weight comes from. I think we're down to one of the last parts, which is the canopy. And this is one of the few canopies that will fit the camera. And it's one of the canopies that I find to be very, very light. Of course, to get the cameras, both of them in there, I had to dremel some of the canopy out. I did break a canopy in two different places. So something else to note there. But I've been, I crashed a lot. I've been doing this probably ever since the Foxier Digisite review came out as I started looking at this and kind of going through all my parts and seeing what I could make and the direction I wanted to go. We're finally down to the flight footage, and the first flight we're going to look at is on the heavier of the two shark bite whoops. Again, this is all running 2S, and this particular case, the flight is 1102-9000 kV, and it's running on a 350 milliamp 2S battery. 350 milliamp became a target after I was talking to uh, Dumb Thumbs FPV. You might be familiar with him, his channel, Man Cave Hobbies. I had been flying a 450 on these, and then he asked me, well, what are you getting for flight time on a 350? And I... That, that, kind of, that makes very good sense because you crash with all the weight. So if you want your durability to be high, you need to decrease your overall weight. Not just your quad weight, but the battery weight as well. So if we can go down from a 450 to a 350 and still get recent, decent flight times, yeah. If you want to go with the 450, you just get more flight time. I've already experienced that. With a 450, I was getting almost a four-minute flight in general. But this flight is on a 350 milliamp. Let's get started. I'm only going to talk about the flight a little bit. Um, mainly the fact that my daughter's in this. But 
Uh, I had uh, so many flights. Yeah, we get off to a rough wow. start. I, I, and I'll get to why I've got a flight with a little bit of a rough start. I had so much flight footage. All the testing, because you know that the VRX on the Shark Bite records automatically. I had almost 15 gigs of flight data from just flight data, made it sound like it was all important. Flight video footage of the, the Shark Bite system from just doing my testing, trying different motors, kind of moving things around, making different adjustments, different props, PID tuning, all that data I went through, and then I threw that out, and I still had almost nine gigs of other data to go through. Oh, and that feet. surprised me quite a bit, because a single flight on most of these is around 300 megabytes. So it takes you know at least three of those to get to a gigabyte, and I had well over 10 gigabytes of flight data. Um, so, and then I've also got the audio recording data. That's what you're hearing. That's kind of my camera. It's kind of standard of what I do here on the channel. Uh, then you had flights that were just too crashy. So I had to eliminate certain kinds of flights. And really what I was looking for and why I picked the two flights that we're going to see is that their landing voltages come in very, very similar. And I think the flights are pretty similar as well. That was something that I wanted to kind of get a test for. This isn't necessarily to wow you with flight or to impress you with some sort of build or anything like that. This, again, was about seeing how viable this was. And, you know, my goal, even though my personal goal is usually 2 minutes and 30 seconds, if we can get 3 minutes of pretty aggressive flying, I think that is generally what the masses would want uh, as kind of their barometer for flight time. Uh, so I had to pick out two flights where the flights were fairly similar and their ending voltages came in pretty close because that tells us uh, more about the hardware choices and the differences. That way, if you want to build one or if a manufacturer is wanting to build one of these, they can look at this and decide whether they you know, want to make the similar choices that I did or make design changes. You know, I, of course, don't have the capabilities to design a, a new frame or get a new mold or a new motor or anything like that. Those are choices that those manufacturers can make. Um, I just taking what I've got and trying to make something work and make it as light as possible because, well, and whoops, weight is really important. We know that. Mr. Shutterbug, he is a mad scientist when it comes to low weight. So if you haven't seen some of his videos, go check out his channel. Uh, I think there are things that manufacturers can do to decrease the weight of this and do better than I did. And I think you, many of you out there can do it better than I did as well. This is just me tinkering around, and now I wanted to show it with all of you to see what you think. Kind of gauge, are, are, is this something that you think is a viable product? If you saw this in a review, would you think this is a regular product, a boring product, a great product, a terrible product, or somewhere in between? Uh, as you can see with SharkBite and the OSD stuff, there's still some OSD programming to be done as far as the communication between the flight control bay of fire beta flight and shark bite uh but we're gonna end our flight there but you didn't see or unless you were eagle-eyed what that flight time was let's move into the 0802 flight this is the lighter of the two and i think the biggest difference in these flights is that i was sitting on the table with the props running for about a second longer than when on the 1102 flight i think this has some tendency to be more aggressive in certain spots and slower in other spots as well but you know i've got to pick two and I had so much flight footage, I did not want to go through it all. <laughs> there was, I don't know. You know, after a while, you're kind of like, okay, I got to pick something. Let's find two that match. And so that's the decision that I made was to match, find two that the ending voltages were very, very similar. And then just call it good there. I don't think I have a crash in this one. I've watched so much flight footage, I can barely remember which one I've picked now. Even though I labeled it to make sure when I'm clicking it to narrate while you're watching it. <laughs> but we may see a crash that uh, something that's interesting about this is that I had turtle mode trouble or flip over after crash trouble on the 1102 9000 kV but I did not on the 0802 so that could be a prop issue I suspect so it's something to, to keep in mind there maybe my antenna was becoming more of a kickstand and not so much of a just antenna I've got a pretty floppy antenna on both of these I did add some welder to the UFL and the board connector uh, just to make sure it stayed down. I've probably used these antennas on other VTXs, so I don't think the connectors were pristine. Uh, they do snap on cleanly. And you can see I get clean video, but I wanted to make sure, especially with this 1102, I think it popped off a few times. 
so I added some welder. Uh, welder is very similar to, you know, some people will say use Shugu or E6000 or I just use welder because by name it's easy to get. E6000, the E6000s that I've used, they're kind of different. Depends on who you buy it from or what it looks like. Sometimes it's real foamy, other times it's kind of gummy. And I think welder sticks better. So I stick with what works for me, you stick with what works for you. Okay, the flight has ended. You've got to see it all the way through to the end. So let's take a look at this image where I've captured the last frame of our flight. This is right before disarm, because on disarm, on shark bite right now, it goes back to zero. So you can see with the 0802, 12,000 KV, we get two minutes and one second. And with 1102, 9,000 KV, you get two minutes and 57 seconds. So that's pretty substantial. And it kind of goes against a little bit of what we talk about a lot in whoops, where lighter will get us longer flight time. Well, in this particular case, there is a KV difference. There's nothing I can do about that. Uh, there isn't an 0802 9000 KV on the market that I could find. There isn't an 0802 10,000 KV on the market that I could find. 0802 12,000 KV is the lowest I can find in the market. And mine are the original 0802 12,000 KVs. They're not the SE edition. These are ones I've had in my bin for a while, and I just got lucky. I believe the original Mobulus 7 had 0802 12,000 KV, I think, because I have a set of those, but unfortunately they have the motor stem at uh, point 0.8. So I don't have any, well, I don't have very many props and no really good props. Most of the props that are doing point 0.8 are kind of the, the conical e-sheen sort of props, most of the uh, current iterate, well, the brushed props will fit. We just don't have as many of those uh, to try out. So uh, using the Happy Model 0802 12,000 KV just wasn't an option because that uh, shaft size. Of course, 1102 9,000 KV with a 1.5 millimeter shaft. It's relatively popular, so there is a pretty good assortment of props that we could try out, way more than I've shown you in this video. But you can see there we get almost a minute floor, more flight time. Voltages that we have on screen, these are kind of where the batteries last recover to. They didn't move above this. And you can see, uh, again, 0802 is on top. We recovered a 3.68 volts per cell and the 1102 at 3.66. So very, very close in voltage and about a minute more flight time. And so uh, fairly similar flights. So how do you beat it? Well, I think beating it is pretty easy. And most of you probably are, can think about five or six different ways of beating the weight but I don't know if that is important because I really felt like the 1102s flew a lot better. You know, you've got more weight in there, but it carries its weight a little bit better. You know, it's something if you've got the motors, you can try it out for yourself and you might find that you like 0802s. I wouldn't suggest doing 0803s. I remember the trash can when it came out, the original trash can, it was all red. It had 0803 motors on it, and I really didn't like those motors. They have a huge lump of thrust kind of right at the hover point of a good many quads. Um, I did have, by chance, I, on a flyer, I bought some uh, 09 series motors. And you can see here from the image, we have an 0904, and we have 0903, different KVs and their weights. I did not bother to even try them on because of their weights. They both come in heavier than my heaviest motor. So the efficiency would have to be through the roof, and I can't imagine it would have the efficiency because of the stator size. So I didn't try those. Those are the OAK motors. So my preference is to fly the 1102. I really think that, you know, I'll probably fly the 0802 because it's fun, but it's only, you know, two-minute flights. And I'll probably just run it until, you know, I break it in some way. Maybe I just break the motors and then I can put more 1102s on there. Maybe a motor manufacturer will come out with 802s that are 9,000 kVs. I certainly would try 0802 motors if they were in the 9 to 10,000 kV. I think the motors handle these props just fine. They're very light props and they, they seem to cut through the air. They don't seem to bog down or slow down. But there is a difference when you feel the overall weight of the quad and how it responds on 0802 versus 1102. Um, my, my feeling of all the flights was that I handled this one better and I could actually fly it more aggressively. That's what I would recommend if you want to start by, by building a shark bite woot is to go with 1102. Choose the KV of your choice and then make all sorts of better choices as far as keeping the weight down. I'm very excited to see what you all come up with. And it should be very easy to beat. If, if either one of these are the lowest 
weight shark bite whoops, it should be very easy to beat. And I'm excited to see him. So if you've got a build of your own, put it down in the comments section. If YouTube slurps your link off to your image or your rotor builds or whatever, just be patient. I'll go in there and I'll clear it out and make sure YouTube allows it. YouTube thinks all links are spam, probably because most of them are. But uh, put your builds down below. I'm very excited to see what you guys have done. I'm very excited to see what the future brings with Sharkbite. Uh, I, honestly, when I thought about this, I thought, is this something that DRL could branch into? An indoor drone racing? Or is it just not, is it not TV friendly still? I don't know. Because who would have thought drone racing would have been on TV a couple years ago? Video breakup, especially the huge environments they're in. But that was something that was in the back of my mind was, is it a viable product? Can a manufacturer build these and people want them? And can a manufacturer build these, keep the weight low so they perform well, and they're fairly durable? I think one of the big barriers is the camera and the canopy com combination because there's absolutely no camera protection on either one of these whatsoever. They've got that long old nose just poking right outside of that canopy. So we're going to definitely need a new canopy design. Uh, if you're looking for the canopy, it's oftentimes uh, as a Crux 3 replacement part or the AE65. I did break one, and here is an image of it. How I, a lot, I misplaced one of the pieces that I broke, but you can see how the two arms on the side uh, did eventually break. But that's after many, many, many crashes. And then here's my MIPI cable and the wire that got severed. It got pinched underneath the camera, and with enough pinching, it came down on top of the quad. While we're down here at the desk, let's take a look at some of the finer points of the quads. Uh, first about mounting. Now, typically when you uh, have these boards, you get a, a grommet that one side is long and the other side is short as far as the spacing goes, and then it has a little recess down in there to kind of capture the board. Uh, when I built the first one, when I did my dry fitting, I didn't think it was long enough, so I cut a part of the grommet off that bottom. So it's pretty much even on the top and the bottom. That wasn't necessary. As you can see, we can see a part of the standoff below the board. So you can do what I did, which was just to turn those over on the second one. Of course, this keeps our board up a little bit higher, a little better job. You can see over here where, because of the hole size in the Sharkbite uh, VTX, you can see, especially here, how it's coming down below the post height. That's another reason why I suggest keeping the uh, breakouts on there, is that that helps keep the board at the same level but uh, so my short rubber grommet puts me in peril things come pretty close down here but so far I haven't had any troubles in all my crashes this one has much more clearance uh, something else that I would suggest that you do when you're building is try to uh, figure out well not building if someone's making a canopy make a canopy that keeps this MIPI connector down as part of the canopy to hold that down because I do find that that pops up and it pops up ever so slightly and then your camera doesn't come on and you're like, oh no, I've killed the camera. I couldn't tell you how many times I took these canopies apart only to find out that the MIPI cable that is accessed right here is available and I could just press it down and go again. So, <laughs> if you're making a canopy, someone, of course, 3D prints, you maybe you're going to design your canopy. I would suggest getting one that holds this MIPI down in some portion. You know, if you just have this area over here come out just a touch to hold that down on this area over there, you wouldn't be adding a ton of weight, and it would sure help you out. Make sure your camera doesn't come disconnected. Uh, as far as the antenna goes, I just poked mine out the top. And you can see that welder that I mentioned is right here on the UFL. And then this one, I did not use the welder on the UFL, probably because it's staying on there a little bit better. But yeah, that, that was something that caught me out a few times where I thought my, my flight rounds were, were ending prematurely. You can also tell here a little bit better how much of the canopy I ground out to get the camera lenses through. i take a quicker look at that too. So part of that weight that I showed you in the canopy isn't still on the quad because it's been shaved away. A uh, short, shorter MIPI cable. I believe there's one available from Caddx. Dumb Thumbs was just telling me tonight about, I think it's 5.5 millimeters, or not 5.5 millimeters, 5 millimeter, 5 centimeters. So that might help save a little bit of weight as well. Uh, the boards I used, interestingly enough, I started out with the Crazy B F3, and I found that board was a full gram lighter. I'm trying to find it now. I wasn't prepared for this part. I wasn't going to cover it. It wasn't in my notes. Yes, the, the Crazy B F3 is a full gram lighter than the F4. But unfortunately, because you have to have Betaflight 4 Plus, 
it just doesn't handle it very well. Now maybe maybe we should tweak out beta flight to where it's just watered down so much that the F3 can handle it and we get that full gram difference. I didn't think it was worth it. Because who's going to buy an F3? If you tried to make a product or I don't think you guys will even be able to find these very much. So if you're going to try to build one, finding an F3 just wasn't very viable. And it flew terribly because I found it on the bench running at 50% CPU with the accelerometer and everything that I could quickly think of to disable. It was still running 50% on the CPU. So not very viable. I did kill one F3, uh, Crazy B F4, excuse me, B3 board. Uh, the 5 volt regulator did die on this one. Uh, not that long ago, actually. It made it through a whole bunch of crashes before I finally killed it. I wonder, because it did come out of that one, I wonder if maybe my board's got a little bit too close. I don't know. Uh, I don't tend to run through these boards nearly as much as some of you do, because I do get a lot of questions about which board is the most reliable. I try not to base my advice on my own experience in that case, because I see so many people running through these, um, all the different boards. So if you have had good luck with one particular board, that's another good point to leave down in the comment section for anybody who might be wanting to build one. Of course, these are 2 to 4S compatible, and that's a big deal because, well, Darkbyte needs 7 volts. 2S is an easy way to get it, so you can just wire power right on top of your uh, battery leads. Mentioned it a little bit ago, but I did break a series of props. Here are three I kept on my desk. Take a quicker look. You can see how it's breaking part of the hub out. Seems to be the weak point. I did notice this one's got quite a bit of the hub missing. This one just got the blade missing. I didn't keep all of them, unfortunately. Uh, there's part of the hubs missing on that one, too. But um, So, yeah, I did. Oh, I found here. I got one more. So, yeah, part of this hub, too. So, I broke five props that I've got sitting here on my desk. There's probably three or four others sitting in the house somewhere because, <laughs> uh, you know, when you pick up from the kitchen table, maybe not everything makes it into your pocket. Of course, I was flying GNB and RDQ batteries. That's kind of my, my go-to. It's what I had the most of. I found the flight time and the performance was very consistent across those two batteries. As far as the frame goes, I already mentioned that in this particular one, I cut out the little pieces that go uh, between this point and the post. Well, not the post directly, but the support down there. I can show it better down this way. So between kind of where my fingernail is, between there on all four sections, I removed all four of those on the 0802, but I didn't remove all those on the 1102. I just didn't think it was worth it. The difference in 0 0.06 grams, I don't know. I'm probably going to end up putting the quad bladed props back on, and that'll gain me more than that. Uh, you probably noticed how I routed my antennas. Uh, that's just to keep it out of the way. No particular reason or rhyme behind that. Just trying to keep it out of the props. I could have made the battery lead shorter, but I wanted to be able to get a hold of it with both fingers. I did not want to have it, you know, to where I had it glued to the side or anything like that. Because you could make the lead excessively short and then glue your XT60 with some, you know, crazy glue or something like that. You just plugged your battery directly in. Uh, if I go this way, it still requires about this much length. So I could make this a little bit smaller. Probably not going to have much of an impact on weight. The, the next logical things that I think most people would try to do is remove the mo motor connectors and the, the connectors off the board. I think that will gain, well, gain. As far as losing weight, you'll lose another, what is it, 0.3 or 0.4 grams with all four connectors. Maybe it's even half a gram. Uh, you can also tell from that shot that I had to grind off part of these round areas in order to build it out. So where that stud comes out or the support for the flight stack comes out, that is all round. So I had to ground those down flat. Of course, I didn't have to do that when I had the Crazy B F3 in there. Only had to do that on one port for the USB. So, eh, little things. Now, as far as the camera goes, I took those adapters that you get with cameras and I cut off the little round areas and then put my screw in. So the, this canopy is wider than the cameras are. Uh, so I had to make up for that distance. That's something else. If you're printing a canopy, you might be able to make it more narrow or something like that. Maybe make it more turtle friendly. Or if a manufacturer gets involved, you know, give us a canopy that maybe sets the camera back a little bit, gets it the weight over the center, and then protects the lens at least a little bit more than this. Because as, I, so, as I've shown you already, 
th those cameras are well out front, especially the run cam. It's really poking its face out. The Fox Ear is set a little deeper. It's got a long nose too, but as far as the lens goes in the case, it's set a little bit deeper. If you go back and watch the flight footage, I think the Fox Ear Digisight is the better camera, but unfortunately there are many reports of cameras that are, aren't performing like mine. Um, I think Dumb Thumbs reported his camera died after he tried to make various changes to make it work better. So the Fox Ear Digisight's a nice camera, and one of the downsides to this is, you know, typically in Whoops we tend to go through cameras, and these are 50 bucks a pop. You might not want to do that. Again, let me know down in the comments section. Uh, is 50 bucks a pop too much for these cameras? You'll probably say yes, because we're a bunch of cheap skates in FPV. You'll probably say, oh, they're only $18 cameras. Well, I, I don't think we're going to be getting Sharkbite $18 cameras anytime soon. But at 50 bucks, I think that is a point where we have to consider what we're building. And in my case, you know, I have the advantage that most of this stuff was sent me to me for free. I did pre-order two boards and two cameras from uh, Get FPV, which uh, did show up about the same time as my Foxier Digisite review. So that kind of started me down this path. And this is the Foxier camera that died. So I stole the MIPI cable off of that one. So hopefully that gives you a baseline, some sort of grasp of what you may want to build. And speaking of build, I know that Sharkbite is a little bit hard to come by and the Word on the street is that they're working very hard to try to produce as many units as they can. So if you're interested, it's very likely you're going to have to place some sort of pre-order somewhere or have some sort of alert for in stock for your favorite FPV shops in order to get one. My understanding as well is that the Whoop boards are the most popular and they're going very, very quickly. So it might be kind of tough. And even though it is tough, I have a poll. I'll put it right up here. Are you interested in Sharkbite Whoops? That's it. Just the one question. Click it. Tell me what you think. Is this a viable product? Do you want one of these? Are you going to make one of these? Do you want a manufacturer to produce one of these? Where do you think these weights and motors and prop combinations and frames will all end up? I'm hoping we see all sorts of development based upon a shark bite whoop because I know that I enjoy flying it around inside. And I think that that's one of the things about shark bite is that low, low latency allows you to fly just like you do with analog inside. And hopefully this video has demonstrated that. I'm interested to see what you're going to do. I'm interested in your plan of attacks. But if you have any comments, questions, suggestions, or otherwise, please let me know in the section down below. I appreciate your time. Thanks for watching.